Hello and welcome to Final Fantasy XV Weapon Analysis. In this episode, we'll be taking an in-depth look at one of the most underrated weapons in the game, Scepter of the Pious. I'm just gonna say it right here. I think the Scepter is the strongest royal arm in the game, and one of the strongest weapons in the game, period. However, unlike most top weapons in this game, the Scepter absolutely needs to be played in a certain way in order to elevate it from a below-average royal arm, to possibly the only weapon capable of rivaling Zwill crossblades in damage output. But to do this, the scepter needs to be accompanied with a certain other royal arm. Technically speaking, any weapon in the game could fill the role of a secondary weapon for Scepter of the Pious, but both the clever is easily the best choice for a variety of reasons. Like the scepter, it scales with magic, so it's not going to be gimped by our build. It is fast, can attack from range, has one of the best face counters in the game, gives you a good mobility option, and even has some decent stat boosts. And it also lets you do this thing. I'll explain why this we secondary weapon is so important when I talk about combat strategies, but there is something I need to get out of the way first. So I made the bold claim that Scepter has comparable DPS to the unchallenged best weapon in the game, Swill Crossblades. If you find this hard to believe, which you probably do, you can watch a video I made where I compared the damage output of these two weapons. Link to this video can be found in the description. Long story short, it's actually true. The Scepter can indeed deal that much damage per second, and much of this video is dedicated to explaining how to do this and why it is possible. If you're familiar with this weapon's moveset, you'll know that it can transform into these four royal arms during its basic combo. On top of this, it also transforms into Axe of the Conqueror during aerial attacks, face counters and combo finishers. These two forms are bad, and there is little point in ever using them. The sword form is situationally good for reasons I'll get to later, but where this weapon absolutely shines is the trident form. The damage output of the trident form is simply insane on the right build. Noctis will spawn these clones that will deal damage to any enemies that touch them, and stacking them on top of each other results in faster attack speed than even that of daggers. The big problem with this combo is the axe wing at the end. It's slow, weak, bad and slow. This is one of the reasons why a secondary weapon is needed to play with this weapon. Just before Noctis is about to do the axe finisher, swap to the bow for one attack and then quickly swap back to the scepter. This resets the combo and you'll never need to do the horrible axe wing. It takes a bit of practice to learn to recognize what is the last attack in the combo before the finisher. It's this tab you can see on the screen right here. After using it for a while, I no longer even need to see Noctis to know when to swap weapons. You can tell how far into the combo Noctis is based on sound effects alone. Doing this swap trick is absolutely necessary in order to make this weapon good. I cannot stress enough how important it is. This is your main combo, the thing that kills stuff fast, the reason why this weapon is worth anything. Everything else there is to this weapon is just to support this combo by minimizing the time Noctis is doing anything else. While the DPS of the trident form is fantastic, its forward momentum is very lacking. The sword form can be used to make up for this weakness. Noctis will slide forward and chase the enemy down while doing the sword combo, and thus it is useful for closing the gap if the enemy jumps or is thrown back by your attacks. You can quickly swap the sword form from the trident form by briefly releasing the attack button and then pushing it again, like doing a finisher. This trick can actually be used to bypass the need to use the bow in the main combo, but it has a very strict timing when close to the enemy, and it's very easy to mess it up and do the axe wing instead. The face counter of the scepter is also horrible, and this is once again a situation where the bow is a must-have. Just swap to it whenever Noctis would do a face counter to do the bow's face counter instead. It's stronger and faster with better range and stagger. Noctis will do face counters in four situations. After facing, after parrying, after casting holy with the ring, and after doing this recovery flip thing. 
Scepter's Warp Strike is one of the better Royal Arm Warp Strikes. For one, it costs a surprisingly small amount of health to use. It is not much of an offensive move and isn't great for engaging enemies because it is so slow, but it has two good defensive uses. This Warp Strike is an amazing way to dodge large AoE attacks. The iframes start immediately and it lands for a substantially long time. You don't need to release your lock on or disengage the enemy, you can just warp high into the air and continue attacking right after. The other thing this warp strike is good for is escaping a chaotic situation. One of the scepter's main weaknesses is a poor combo starter, which makes it very unsafe to use when surrounded by fast, unpredictable enemies. By warping high up, you can take a good look at the battlefield and simultaneously escape to a better position. Finally, I want to talk about the aerial attack and the directional jumps from the trident form. The aerial attack itself is surprisingly good for an axe attack, but still not a great option for fighting flying enemies. It's best used as an engagement tool after launching into the air with one of the directional jumps. Usually when you finish off an enemy, the scepter will be in trident form, which will allow you to perform these jumps. You can do the jump even after the enemy is dead to launch into the air and quickly engage another enemy with an aerial attack. This works over surprisingly long distances and is very useful for changing targets. The aerial attack will always bring you back to the ground and you can continue the basic combo rotation from there. Now that we've got the basic combat strategy down, we can discuss why this weapon is so good. One of the biggest reasons is the fact that it scales with magic. The attack value of all royal arms is affected by strength, except for scepter and bow where it's affected by magic. On top of this, strength boosts your damage in general no matter what weapon you're using. This would seem to imply that strength scaling is better because it effectively gets counted twice for royal arms. However, Noctis's magic stat is significantly higher than his strength stat, and magic boosting accessories are three times stronger than strength boosting accessories. On level 120 with no buffs, the highest strength Noctis can have is 1160. The highest possible magic is a little over 2400. And the Scepter still benefits from Noctis's base strength even on a magic setup. Another reason why the Scepter is so powerful is because it has access to Trident of the Oracle's basic combo. This is possibly the strongest basic combo in the game because of the clones Noctis leaves behind while attacking. The speed and damage are almost unmatched. However, for it to be this powerful, the enemy has to not move from where they are. This is one of the biggest weaknesses of this weapon, and there are others as well. The fact that the scepter scales with magic may be its greatest strength, but it is also its greatest weakness. You see, there isn't a Magitech suit equivalent for a magic-based setup. With all other weapons, you can effectively use Magitech suits, which grant massive boosts to your health and vitality, along with the strength buff, which is the strongest in the game. This means that if you want to make the best out of the Scepter, you'll be very squishy. Relying on magic instead of strength has other issues as well. Damage during armature mode is strength-based, so armature will be much weaker. The Scepter also has an unusually low armature bar buildup on all of its attacks. All in all, you'll be using armature much more rarely, and it's going to be noticeably weaker. Having a magic build also severely limits your possible weapons, though it opens up other options, and the Scepter is essentially 5 weapons in one. Like I mentioned earlier, another big weakness of the Scepter is the relatively slow combo starter. It's not the worst in the game, in fact it has great damage, but when fighting a group of fast-moving enemies, it can sometimes be hard to start a combo. Once you manage to start the combo, there won't be much of an issue, but getting there can sometimes be a problem. This is why using the aerial jump and sword form to switch between enemies is such a useful technique. It allows you to bypass this problem. Finally, the scepter is just unusable in aerial combat. No air step, not even an aerial blitz, and even the warp strike always brings you back to the ground. The health loss also warrants mention here. Although I find it to be almost unnoticeable, I know I'm in the minority when I say I think it's one of the smallest downsides to royal arms. Yeah, like with all royal arms, you do lose health while using this weapon. However, for the Scepter, the health loss does seem to be on the lower side of the spectrum in comparison to other royal arms, for both normal attacking and the warp strike. 
The magic build honestly deserves an entirely separate video, but this weapon analysis wouldn't be complete without me talking about it briefly. For your attire, there isn't any other option than Prince's Fatigues without the jacket. It boosts both magic and strength, which both benefit the scepter, so there isn't much competition there. For accessories, it's a tougher choice. For optimal DPS, you obviously want Hypno Crown and two Mystic Circlets. However, if you want a bit more survivability, you can either go for the Adamantite Bangle to max out your HP, or have a Magic Tech Suit in there for a little more damage at the cost of being less tanky without going full glass cannon. With weapons, you essentially have six options for four slots. These are the Scepter itself, both the Clever as a secondary weapon, Sword of the Father for the stat boosts, Wizard Shield also for the stat boosts, a spell for New King, and Ring of the Lucii for Holy, Death, and the Astral Vacuum Cleaner. In the end, it just comes down to what you prefer. What you see here is my favorite setup. I don't find the magic boost of the wizard shield to be worth a weapon slot, and if I use spells, it's usually for a very specific purpose where I'll have prepared them beforehand. The relevant question here is, is the good as will crossblades? And that's actually a difficult question to answer. These are two of the most powerful weapons in the game, but they're strong for different reasons and are overall two very different weapons, which makes comparing them a hard task. So will crossblades don't really have much of going for them beyond DPS and speed while lacking almost any downsides, whereas the scepter has significantly more depth to it, but that depth comes at a heavy cost. Instead of making some in-depth comparison, I'm just gonna give you a list of upsides and downsides of each weapon. The will has less immediate options due to a more shallow moveset, but more build options for being a strength weapon. You can get more defense from Magitech suits, have a better combo starter and an aerial combo. Armature's charge is faster and deals more damage. However, you need to be at full HP or else the will descends from godlike status to just being the best pair of daggers in the game. Scepter makes you more glass cannony and forces you into a certain type of build, but has a more versatile moveset. Holy and Elemancy spells will be much stronger with this build than with a strength one. The weapon also has more range and stagger. To deal full damage, the enemy needs to be stationary, but your health doesn't matter. You also get the nice Royal Arm Bullet Shield. And finally, they got different warp strikes for different purposes. Damage types are different, which can situationally be a good or a bad thing. Neither can Link Strike, but neither needs it. Overall, I'd say his will is better, but not by a whole lot. The amazing thing here is that I even need to make this comparison to begin with. The fact that Scepter of the Pious is even comparable to his will is more than you could say about any other weapon. For this reason, I believe it deserves a spot next to the three other broken weapons out there. It may be the weakest of the bunch, but it's still a notch above everything else in the game, at least in my opinion. Thank you for watching this episode of Final Fantasy XV Weapon Analysis. If you got any thoughts about the weapon, you can leave them in the comment below. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.